Hey guys, hope you're all well. Today I'm doing my November book haul. Um, most of these books, honestly, I got once again in October. But October was filled of book hauls, so I thought I'll just leave it to November. I actually ended up picking up a few a few things today. Um, I needed to go to town to pick up a delivery, but the times were all different, so I'm hopefully going to get it again. I hope it doesn't go back to the actual warehouse, but um, yeah, so... I picked up a few books in some other charity shops in Asda because I need to go in Asda and yeah I really do need to calm down now so I think I'll just start with two NetGalley books that I've recently been approved for uh, one of them I'm definitely super excited for because it's a tour release and I've been loving um, the tour short stories that I've read and the Wayward Children series so far so the one that I recently got approved for is Remote Control by Nendi Okorafor um, this one is a sci-fi and fantasy based story. It publishes on the 19th of January next year and it says that the sort of tagline is an alien artifact turns a young girl into death's adopted daughter in remote control, a thrilling sci-fi tale of community and female empowerment. The day Fatima forgot her name, death paid a visit. From here on, she would be known as Sankofa, a name that meant nothing to anyone but her the only tie to her family and her past. Her touch is death, and with a glance, a town can fall, and she walks, alone, except for her fox companion, searching for the object that came from the sky and gave itself to her when the meteors fell, and when she was yet unchanged, searching for answers. But is there a greater purpose for Sankofa, now that death is her constant companion? That sounds super eerie. Um, I feel like I, I would quite enjoy that. And then the other book that I got approved for is, I think it's part of a series, I really hope it's the first in a series, yes it is, um, it's here, it's Eris apparently, part of Daughters of the Dynasty series by Diana Marr. Um, it's the first in an epic and romantic YA series following the fictionalised descendants of the only official recognised empress region of China. Gemma Huang is a recent transplant to Los Angeles from Illinois, having abandoned plans for college to pursue a career in acting, much to the dismay of her parents. Now she's living with three roommates in a two-bedroom hotel, auditioning for bit roles that hardly cover rent. Gemma's big break comes when she's asked to play a lead role in the update of uh, Madame Butterfly filming for the summer in Beijing. When she arrives, she's stopped by paparazzi at the airport. She quickly realises she may as well be the twin of one of the most notorious young socialites in Beijing. Thus kicks off a summer of revelations in which Gemma uncovers a legacy her parents have spent their lives protected her from. One her mother would conceal from her daughter at any cost. That sounds really exciting. Every now and then I dip into these sort of YA more romancy based things but I have to really be in the mood for them so I hope I get to that sooner rather than later as that does sound like a really fun time. So on to the next book which is a recent library book I got. Someone mentioned in my last haul that I actually got the sequel to a book and I thought so because I remembered the book and I think I said in that video but I swear that it had a different name. I don't know why I didn't think oh maybe this is a sequel but thank you um, to the person that pointed it out that it was in fact a sequel and so yeah I picked up the first book and that is The Gospel of Loki by Joanne M. Harris and yeah so I've been wanting to read this for a while. I love uh, mythology and I need to know more about Norse mythology because all I get really is fed in from like the Marvel Universe but I know more about Greek and Roman mythology rather than Norse so I do need to read more like fiction based stuff as well as actual text information um, so I thought this would be a fun way to kind of get more into that. With his notorious reputation for trickery and deception and an ability to cause as many problems as he solves, Loki is a North god like no other. Demon born he is viewed with the deepest suspicion by his fellow gods who will never accept him as one of their own and for this he vows to take his revenge. But Loki, but while Loki is planning the downfall of Asgard and the humiliation of the tormentors, Greater powers are conspiring against the gods and a battle is brewing that will change the fate of the worlds. From his recruitment of by Odin from the realm of chaos, through his years as the go-to man of Asgard, to his fall from grace and the build-up to, to Ragnarok. This is the unofficial history of the world's ultimate, ultimate trickster. Uh, it's a fantasy novel, an epic adult fantasy novel. And yeah, apparently this author has other books, so I'll be interested to see if I like this, uh, what she does usually very exciting hopefully i can start that soon and then just read them back to back although with new lockdown measures being implemented again um i wonder if i'll be able to get extended 
borrow time we shall see so the next lot of books i got in a so basically there's this high street near me and i've been past it a few times well i've been to the high street but i've been past this charity shop a few times and i kept meaning to go in there because it looked like they had a load of really interesting books on the shelves a lot of classics um so i needed to go there and just kind of have a little look so i recently did that and they did have the books that i was hoping for and then some so it's a bit of a random mix i'm just picking out the books as they come out of this bag that i've got the charity shop is called sense by the way and all of these some of these are more expensive than you would expect but some of them are thick books so the first two i have here are by an author i'm kind of scared to try it i've seen hannah on craven books talk about this author particularly this first book i'll show you in a second and it sounds like a wild ride it sounds kind of like bizarro fiction kind of grotesque if i remember correctly um <clears throat> I do apologise, my voice keeps going in and out. But these are by Ryu Murakami. We've got In the Miso Soup and Pearson. They're like little novellas, little short works of fiction. Um, and this one says, It's just before New Year and Frank, an overweight American tourist, has hired Kenji to take him on a guided tour of Tokyo's nightlife. But Frank's behaviour is so odd that Kenji turns to entertain a horrible suspicion. His client may in fact have murderous desires. Although Kenji is far from innocent himself, he unwillingly descends with Frank into an inferno of evil from which only his 16-year-old girlfriend, Jun, can possibly save him. It just sounds a bit bizarre. And then this one says, Every night, Kawashima Masayuki creeps from his bed and watches over his baby girl's crib while his wife sleeps. But this is no ordinary domestic scene. He has an ice pick in his hand and a barely controllable desire to use it. Deciding to confront his, de deciding to confront his demons, Kawashima sets into motion a chain of events seeming to lead inexorably to murder. They sound really bizarre. They've got to be horror in some element as well. Um, but yeah, I've not seen a hell of a lot of people talk about it. Um, apparently this one is like a dark psycho thriller. Um, and yeah, this one says, reads like the script notes for American Psycho. So I think it's going to be a wacky ride. Definitely something I'll have to be in the right if there is ever a right kind of mood for um but i love how these covers kind of are a similar vibe then i've got another really weird one and i think <laughs> craving books so hannah and craving books has the best kind of weird gory bizarro tastes in reading and this is another book that i've seen her talk about before and this is tampa by Alyssa nutting and i think people have said it's like the Lolita of more modern times and it's sort of reversed so in this um, a female teacher is seducing a male student and I feel like you don't hear that enough because females can be predators as well and I feel like a lot of times it's ushered away and it's like oh and a lot of times it's like people spin it as if they're especially if they're like a good looking predator it's like oh you'd be lucky to and I've seen I watched a lot of like documentary stuff on youtube and it's disgusting that way of thinking but yeah um i'll be interested to read a book from that perspective um and it says under the sunny suburban skies of tampa florida celeste price starts a new job as a teacher at the local high school she has film star looks a, see what i mean a red sports car a square jawed husband and one big secret a relentless desire for 14 year old boys unrepentant and monstrous celeste behaves outrageously to pursue her prize but will she get a call and how far will she go to satisfy her desires so it sounds really grim and it's that it's really interesting the design that they've used so they've got a zip yeah or like a an opening that obviously looks like the female genitalia but here it's like buttoned up so i wonder if that's signifying the restraint or if she gets caught or whatever like sewing up those like nasty desires if you know what i mean i i like that kind of metaphorical imagery um so we'll see how i get on with this i really like lolita and how it was written the themes it brought up and stuff like that i've got a review of that if you're interested so i might do a dedicated review for this one as well if i'm getting some sort of vibes um and, and stuff that i really want to talk about so we shall see we shall definitely see. some more sort of classics now and this one is one i remember i feel like we had a cover lesson for english and it was with our, our our drama teacher and our english and drama teachers were like really good friends back in high school i don't know why i said high school secondary school um and i swear that we watched or read by Bi uh, a wolf <laughs> beowulf at some point 
and I think it was one of those lessons but I really don't remember an awful lot about it I feel like I have little scenes pop up in my head every random often <laughs> that didn't make any sense um so I got Bio Beowulf uh, by Seamus Penny um does it have a synopsis I really like how simple it looks like it could be an arc like I like the simplicity of the design of this one so there really isn't any synopsis which is strange so I guess I am going to be going into this blind unless I just look it up when I decide to read it wow okay so a few reviews just to kind of sum up what people are thinking um so andrew motion of the financial times says the whole performance is wonderfully intermediate poised between the bible and folk wisdom between light ages and the dark ages and at the same time perversingly actual in its language he has made a masterpiece out of a masterpiece that sounds really interesting and then julian barnes of the times literary supplement says shaman seamus haney's says Seamus Haney's new translation has released the poem from the syllabus back into literature okay so it's one big poem yeah it looks that way or play poem I'm intrigued this is an interesting format and one that I don't read much of um I will definitely generally look up the synopsis when I do go to read it right now I'm not too fast just so I get a, a basic outline of what I'm going into then I have I think it's just these ones I have three Jane Austen so I've been watching a lot of channels that really like classics um, one of them is for the love of classics I really like her channel and she makes it sound easier like she makes it sound fun and there was another video I recently watched oh uh, Claire Hebe is that her channel? I can't remember if that's her surname or not. But she is like a publisher. She works in publishing and she talks about classics and she recently just put up a video on um, kind of the stigma around classics and oh, you don't, a lot of people going into it think you have to be clever enough to read it. And she really breaks down some points that kind of help to diminish that stigma and for me personally diminishes that fear of going into it. So I do own some classics already, like some Dickens and stuff, but I just haven't dived into them yet. Um, so I've got three Jane Austens I know she's quite well loved and I love how um, these two covers are like from a similar edition and this one is very striking as well so I've got Pride and Prejudice there's been also so many adaptations of these things and like modern day spins and I would just really like I really enjoy period dramas like to watch so I just feel like if I enjoy watching it why wouldn't I enjoy reading them so hopefully that is the case so uh, we've got Pride and Prejudice Apparently Jane Austen has elegant and witty social comedy. Belonging to the minor gentry, the Bennets live at Longburn in Hertfordshire. Mother of five daughters, Mrs Bennet's chief interest in life is their marriage prospects. At neighbouring Nef Netherfield, the arrival of a rich young bachelor, Charles Bingley, his two sisters and his friend Fitzwilliam Darcy, fires Mrs Bennet's aspirations. The comedy which ensues of ardent declarations and proposals, of rejections, infidelities, elopement and finally, if you believe it, happy marriages, has made this Jane Austen's most popular novel. So this might be the one I start with. Um, if a lot of people have a lot of high praise for this, it might be the best one to go for, um, for the hope of more enjoyment. So that should be a fun time. And then I have Persuasion, which is the one I hear the least of i feel out of all of her books not that i actively search for reviews but i feel like this one is propped up a little less um i might be wrong but it says here captain wentworth is a young man who has had nothing but himself to recommend him and no hopes of attaining influence and Anne elliot has been persuaded to break off her engagement with him he returns eight years later as a strikingly successful naval officer it's up to Anne, the motherless daughter of sir walter elliot a foolish spendthrift barn baronet obsessed with social standing to find ways of breaking through petty snobberies prejudices and ideals of decorum with which banned all open expression of female desire oh this is a, her last novel interesting apparently it's an enchanting romance and a masterpiece of high comedy so i wasn't expecting humor in this so i hope i get the humor and then 
Lastly, I think in my stash for Jane Austen, I have Sense and Sensibility, and it's a tale of two sisters. With Mr. Dashwood's death, his wife and two daughters, Eleanor and Marianne, are left at the mercy of his son from an earlier marriage. Poorly provided for, the ladies accustom themselves for a life of genteel poverty. When Marianne meets the man of her dreams, everyone expects a marriage, especially her mother. After all, young Mr. Willoughby has the charming connections of ten romantic heroes and eyes for none but Marianne. Then, accountably, he rejects her. With devastating effect, it falls to Eleanor, the sensible elder sister, to pick up the pieces while harbouring a secret longing of her own. Interesting. It seems like they have really interesting social themes and commentaries on those sort of things. So I'll be excited to try those out. Maybe watch some videos alongside it to kind of better my understanding. There's also another channel that I really like. Um, oh, I can't remember her name. She's recently just done uh, Friday Night Frights. For the Halloween season and I love her channel she talks a lot about classics but also classics all over the world um, so it's not as um, whitewashed in that sort of sense so yeah I'd be interested hopefully once I kind of become accustomed to some more familiar work to then broaden my horizons into other cultures classics and things like that next up here I have a Margaret Atwood book and I really love the cover of this. There was two copies of this and one had a slightly different cover but I felt like I enjoyed this one more. And this is Elias Grace. I don't know if I've heard of this one. I don't know. I feel like I've definitely recognised the cover but I don't know if I've heard actual speakings of it if you know what I mean. But it says, sometimes I whisper it over to myself, murderess, murderess. It rustles like a taffeta skirt along the floor around the true story of one of the most enigmatic and notorious women of the 1840s. Margaret Atwood has created an extraordinarily potent tale of sexuality, cruelty and mystery. And Hilary Mantel um, has reviewed it and says, Brilliant, Atwood's prose is searching, so intimate it seems to be written on the skin. Ooh, that sounds like very high praise. Interesting. Julie Merson um, from The Independent on Sunday says, a sensuous, perplexing book, at once sinister and dignified, grubby and gorgeous, panoramic yet specific. I don't think I've ever been so thrilled. This surely is as far as a novel can go. Okay, so this sounds like a lot of people have loved it. Um, and I haven't read any Margaret Atwood before, I don't think. I think I want to read The Hag Seed, that's by her, isn't it? But yeah, I haven't read any yet. Okay, and then this one I've actually been wanting to read for ages. I hope this is the full collection, because I know sometimes they break it up into three separate books or so, so I really hope this is the full one. I'm not too sure, please let me know if you know. But this is Dante's The Divine Comedy, um, and this is the Oxford World's Classics. I really enjoyed this. And as you can see, this one was like £7.50, so it's closer to the price you would have paid. Well, apparently on the back here it says £15, but... I think they've crossed it out no it's only 10 pounds but they made it look like it was more i don't know why they did that um but it you know it's a, it's a weighty but i would have expected it to be more if i saw it for two pounds i would have been like i felt like i was cheating them um but yeah so this is quite a popular is it an like an epic i don't know is it a play yeah i think so it's a very epic story that has been known even if you don't realize you know that is the Divine Comedy. It's been used so many times um, in movies and other books and stuff. Um, and yeah, so I, I would love to read the sort of source of it. So on the back it just says, described variously as the greatest poem of the European Middle Ages, and because of Dante's evangelical purpose, the fifth gospel, the, com the Divine Comedy is central to Western culture. The poem is a spiritual autobiography in journey form. The poet travels from the dark circles of the inferno, up the mountain of purgatory, where Virgil, his guide, leaves him to encounter Beatrice in the earthly paradise. Dante convinced the poem Dante conceived the poem as the new epic of Christendom, and he creates a world in which reason and faith have transformed mortal and social chaos into order. Charles Sisson's blank verse translation is remarkable for its lucidity and vigour, and the introduction diagrams, maps and notes by David Higgins provide the reader with invaluable guidance. So, I think this will be a chunky one that will take me a while, especially because of the use of language. This medieval type of phrasing i may not understand however the translation 
may make it an easier read i don't know we shall see out after this video if you have any recommendations of what i should get to first please let me know i would definitely love your okay. input this one honestly was a cover by i absolutely love these penguin english library editions i think they're stunning all around from the cover to the spine and even the back i just find it really beautiful and this color is like my favorite kind of blue like i absolutely love it so this is the wings of the dove by, Han by henry james i don't know if i've actually heard of this one before but the synopsis on this one says a tale of betrayal and doomed passion the wings of the dove sees a penniless couple desperate to marry ambitious young and in love kate croy and merton densher are delighted to find rich american heiress millie thiel visiting them in london but for very different reasons for millie is dying and is in love with merton and kate sees exactly how she and her fiance might find the money they need this sounds interesting. Populated with fortune hunters, rich relatives and the haunting grandeur of Venetian Palazzo, this love story from Henry James examines the very best and very worst of people in love. That sounds like it could be quite sinister. Oh, what have I just found in here? Ooh, there's a little... Oh, there's a little booklet in here with... Oh, this is beautiful. All the editions that they have in these... Um, penguin english libraries editions and it's got all the like on the back when they were released um that these specific editions released so it's like jane austen persuasion all under april 2012 and then what yeah i guess these all came out in 2012 they're absolutely stunning i like that i'll probably keep that in here as a bookmark and it was in a page so i wonder if that's how far someone got or yeah i'll be keeping that that's really cute nice little surprise okay and we're down to the last lot of books from that charity shop but i have four more books that i got today that i'd like to show you so this one i sort of chuckled on it it sounds bad because it's sort of like a joke thing so me and one of my best friends maria um we're obsessed with it <laughs> we were more obsessed before but we're obsessed with this film called cold comfort farm and we always have inside jokes about it because it's just <sighs> it's too much it really is it's so much <laughs> and we're basically <laughs> We love the actor Rufus Sewell. I always pronounce his name wrong, but it doesn't roll off my tongue. But um, really like him, and she kind of went through a phase where she was watching everything that he was in. So I sort of jumped on and sort of tagged along whenever I was about. And um, one of them was Cold Comfort Farm, and it's just so... It's a ride. It's a wild ride. And I don't think I realised that it was a book, so I keep meaning to send a picture of this to Maria and being like, I should have given this to her for her birthday. If there were two copies, I would have done that, but I'm being selfish. Sorry, Maria. Um, and showing her this and like joking because we have so many inside jokes about it but yes we've got cold comfort farm by stella gibbons and it's it's just a wild ride i love it it's so random um probably the funniest book ever written sunday times says and this is such a kind of garish crazy illustration on the front i really like it it grabs the attention certainly so it says here sensible sophisticated flora post has been expensively educated to do everything but earn a living when she is orphaned at 20 she decides her only option is to descend on relatives the doomed star cadders at the aptly named cold comfort farm there is judith in a scarlet shawl heavy heaving with remorse for an unspoken wickedness raving old ada doom who once saw something nasty in the woodshed that's one of the things that we say <laughs> i saw something nasty in the woodshed <laughs> one of the things <laughs> lustful seth who is played by rufus and despair in reuben judith's two sons and there is amos preaching fire and damnation to one and all as the soup burned flowers flora takes each of the family in hand and brings order to their chaos cold comfort farm is a sharp and clever parody of the melodramatic and rural novel this is just yeah i'm looking forward to reading this one you know i really hope i i hope it reads well as much as the film does but do you know what i mean like yeah i hope i have a good time basically then we have the picture of dorian gray by oscar wilde and this is a book that i've been wanting to read for the longest time and one that i actually had mentioned in my autumnal reading recommendations and i said i hadn't read this one but i'd wanted to so i was very happy to see this i feel like there's better editions i am a cover but i like specific covers and editions and i know that might sound snobby i don't mean it in that way but i definitely have seen some really nice like illustrated ones and stuff but this was there and it was i can't read this writing it wasn't a lot of money at all i think it was like a two pound or something um 
and it was relatively good condition. I mean, it's got some crack in there where someone might have bent the cage over and it's a bit yellowed, but it's not it's not damaged, damaged, you know, because it's still readable. Um, and it is still a striking cover. I just, this guy looks way too snobby for his own good, which I guess encompasses the character rather well, wouldn't you say? So what I know about this one is that I believe Dorian Gray makes a pact with the devil because he wants to stay young and beautiful forever. Um, and I think it's encaptured in this painting that he gets done of him. But as he stays immortal, basically, the painting ages and cracks. I think there's like an evil within it. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited to check this one out. It's very small, but it's one of those books that I feel like everyone kind of raves about. Sorry, I feel like there's fluff somewhere over here but I can't find it um, so yeah one I'm very excited to get to and then we've got this one I don't I feel like I recognize the author's name but I, I can't sort of bring up anything on the top of my head but this is Yusuke Kishi the Crimson Labyrinth and again very striking cover so I was intrigued to see what this was about from the right from a rising new star of horror comes a killer read that will make you lose track of time and reality this is a wicked satire on extremist reality tv in the tradition of the running man if that is indeed what it is welcome to the mars labyrinth where things aren't what they seem welcome to the world of kishi where the plot is as gnarly as the humor is twisted when an up when an unemployed former math major wakes up one day he wonders if he somehow ended up on the red planet the good looking young woman with a hearing aid, she says her name is I, and that she draws erotic comics for a living, seems to have no clue either as to their whereabouts. Their only leads are cryptic construct their only leads are cryptic instructions beamed to a portable device. Has the game begun? There is no reset button, no saving and no continue. Make the wrong move and it's really game over. In the cruel world of the Mars planet, mercy and compassion are only for the weak or the very, very strong. The stakes are nothing less than your life and apparently a lot of money. This sounds, oh, if you're a fan of Battle Royale, don't miss this one. That's a book that I sort of, again, I'm getting more and more interested in. Or if you're a fan of Lost as well. This sounds really cool. It's like a survival kind of reality TV show-esque thing by the sounds of that synopsis um and that intrigues me because i feel like you get a lot of character development i uh, wonder if this is done in multiple povs then you i hope it's done in that way then you might get a lot of differing opinions and conclusions about how they've come to be here what's going on as they discover things so i think this can be done really well and hopefully it's one that i really love and then I saw The Essex Serpent by Sarah Perry, which I loved, uh, it's over here, I don't know if you can see it, Melmoth, which I mentioned also in that autumn reading recommendations. I loved that book. And I've been wanting to read The Essex Serpent for ages. This one's got lovely, kind of purpley gray edges. Um, another stunning cover. And she sort of does a very interesting, it's like she modernizes gothic horror, which I love the idea of and it worked really well in Melmoth for me. I've also got a separate review if you're interested in that. Um, this one says, London 1893. When Cora Seaborn's husband dies, she steps into her new life as a widow with as much relief as sadness. Retreating to the countryside of her son, she encounters rumours of the Essex Serpent, a creature of folklore said to have returned to roam the marshes. Cora is enthralled, believing it may be an undiscovered species. Setting out on its trail, she collides with local minister William Ransom, who thinks a cure for hysteria lies in faith, while Cora is convinced that science offers the answers. Despite disagreeing on everything, he and Cora find themselves drawn together, changing each other's lives in unexpected ways. So there's going to be a love story, but I really do hope it sort of focuses more on this sort of mythology, this, this Essex Serpent. I think that could be a really cool story. And as I mentioned, I was popping through town and I popped into the British Heart Foundation and they had two books that I was interested in. So the first one is The Humans by Matt Haig. I've recently purchased the Midnight Library and I think I'm still going to read that one before this one. Usually with authors, I tend to, I try to read their older books. If they're an author that I feel like I'm going to like, I try to read the older books first just so I can see how the writing improves. And so to sort of lack any disappointment if the older works are not as on par as the newer stuff if you know what I mean but 
I really do want to read the Midnight Library relatively soon, so this one will probably have to wait. Um, but I hear so much praise for this book and just this author in general. And I think this is like a first contact with aliens kind of book. It says, after an incident one wet Friday night where he's found walking naked through the streets of Cambridge, Professor Andrew Martin is not feeling quite himself. Food sickens him, clothes confuse him, even his loving wife and teenage son are repulsive to him. He feels lost amongst a crazy alien species and hates everyone on the planet. Everyone that is except Newton and he's a dog. Who is he really and what could make someone change their mind about the human race? And then I also picked up Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. I don't know. I feel like... Okay, I feel like I've watched a film and I feel like it's called Rebecca, but I don't think it is. I think it's my sis, my cousin Rachel and I thought that was really boring. But it's random because I think they're by the same author, but I might be completely wrong and I should really just Google it and find out. But anyway, whenever I think of this book, I think of that movie and I think, oh, no, it's boring. But every, I, th I just might have it twisted in my mind, but everyone says Daphne du Maurier is awesome. And Mercy's Bookish Musings always talks about, well, not always, but she has talked about Daphne du Maurier in the past and she always makes it sound so compelling so another sort of gothic literature this one is last night i dreamt i went to the mandalay again working the ladies companion the heroine of rebecca learns her place the future looks bleak until on a trip to the south of france she meets max de winter a handsome widower whose sudden proposal of marriage takes her by surprise she accepts but whisked she accepts but whisked from glamorous monte carlo to the ominous and brooding mandalay the new mrs de winter finds max a changed man and the memory of his dead wife rebecca is forever kept alive by the forbidden housekeeper mrs danvers so it does it sounds interesting because i want to know if it's like a ghost story or what or if it's creepy or if it's just like really atmospheric with how weird everyone acts so i think i will definitely give it a go probably later rather than sooner and then i picked up two new releases in asda so we've got troy by stephen fry um i don't think i've got his other books which is is it mythos or something he's got like a greek and then and another one and now troy and it's just his retelling of um ancient history basically and i love a bit of ancient history although i tend to go more towards stories based of things as you can see with like the the gospel of loki like fantasy based things um although i do have a general good knowledge because i've previously i think i've got a shelf behind me uh read like non-fiction work so apparently everyone says the audio books for these are quite good because it's stephen fry that actually reads them and he's got an amazing voice so maybe i might try and listen as i read but we shall see and then this one is the one I actually picked up first in Asda because it sounded interesting and it's the only one there and it's called Pine the cover striked me because it was quite complex but simple and the tagline is what really gripped me it says a literary gothic thriller to chill with the marrow so this one says Lauren and her five on Nile live alone in the highlands in a small village surrounded by forests when a woman stumbles on the road on Halloween night Nile drives her back to their house in the morning she's gone. In a community where daughters rebel and men quietly rage, mysteries like these are not out of the ordinary. Lauren looks for answers in her tarot cards, hoping she might be able to read her father's turbulent mind. The neighbours know more than they let on. When a local teenager goes missing, it's no longer clear who she can trust. In a place that can feel like the edge of the world, Toon brilliantly captures the wildness of rural childhood and the intensity of small town claustrophobia, uniting the chill of a modern gothic with a pulse thriller yeah that sounds really captivating and it's still that sort of perfect time to read these things very where well, it gets darker earlier and you can snuggle down and have a candle and a hot drink and get a bit spooky so yeah despite spooky season being over i've got a lot of like gothic classic horror that i can dig into sink my teeth into although i don't know how soon i'm going to get to all of these because i do have some sort of reading plans and like buddy reads and other commitments um coming up which are all good fun but yeah i really do need to think about these sort of things and i go on a book sort of buying spree even if it is not intentional like some of these today's purchases were but anyway let me know if you've read any of these again please let me know if you have a book you think i should prioritize over the others uh, a little brief review of what you thought of some of them if you've read them just so i can get a general more idea of what people are thinking of these and yeah i shall speak to you in another video soon bye